So here we move on to game two of the first match of Swiss, the first round of Swiss. Uh, myself on the left there playing Jinteki and Torian on the right playing Gabe um, rather than Andromeda. So still criminals, still certainly do something to be wary of, but uh, not an monster and the first hand rather going in for HQ for two credits. Again, something to be considered. After I embarrassed myself rather thoroughly in the first match by impaling myself upon Torian's deck and handing the win to him in rather a strong position, I have to say, I endeavoured to try and be more cautious and uh, perhaps not quite as foolhardy in my court match. Hopefully we'll see evidence of some more conservative play <laughs> as opposed to me rushing headlong into a snare on two cards. So I uh, start off with uh, my lovely mana to draw. And we will can we'll start off this this match with ice, ice, hedge fund. In other words, the perfect start for a corporation. Exactly what you want to see. Again, unfortunately, as I cannot see what is actually going on there, uh, I'm pretty sure that was a short gamble. That's certainly a Katie Jones. Um, again, apologies for there being a few things off uh, off frame. Uh, three on Katie, and then Drew. So, move on to back to the corp. Certainly happy about my start here. It's quite positive. It's always nice to see a, a sh uh, hedge fund opening opening hand. I'm going to just score out a clone retirement. One of my favourite new Jinteki cards. So no bad publicity to get rid of, but it doesn't really matter. It's all about scoring those initial cards. Perhaps getting rid of the key breakers that uh, the runner may have in his hand. Uh, otherwise they'd potentially be looking to get more aggressive. So he runs headlong into a Ice wall, first click, second click he draws, looks like an easy mark, third click he draws into an emergency shutdown, and final click, three on Katie. A mandatory draw for the corporation. So all steading, all heading along at a steady pace. First click going to draw. Looking for a little bit more ice, second click hedge fund. Jinteki economy he really has taken off in the last few data packs, as you'll certainly see from this match. I was never particularly short of funds, even against the criminal deck. So here again, he runs headlong into a neural katana. So I'll take, uh, give him three net damage, and take hopefully some key cards away from key breakers. Won't be able to tell you because unfortunately they're out of frame, but uh, I'm sure they're important nevertheless. And he has a look and sees nothing. And he draws up into a sneak door beta by the looks of it. And there he draws a corroder in hand. And for his final click, he will. I think he. Yeah, another throw on Katie. So back to the corporation. It's always a challenge, um, I think. Playing against Gabe, you, you have got to be wary of the Sneak Door Beta, you're assuming it's going to come at some point. Although, again, I'm not particularly defending HQ massively here, so I'm going to stall nice, I'm going to stall into the remote. I think I drew for the first click there. So, again, setting up a remote, seeing where he's going to run, seeing what breakers he's going to put down, first breaker of which he's going to put down a corroder. I assure you, it is a corroder, despite the glare that's making it look like some kind of mirror. Uh, he's going to run through at HQ and hit a snare, which is exactly the card you want them to hit in HQ. So another three net damage, which has completely slowed him down now. Um, he's on five credits, he does have a Katie Jones, and obviously he has a tag now that he has to clear in order to keep his Katie Jones on the board. Which uh, he does. And again, this is the kind of point where you wish you had two Neural MPs in hand. Sadly, this deck doesn't actually run any Neural MPs, but I will certainly score Brain Trust, and uh, very happily so. Up, move myself up to three agenda points scored, uh, which at point he has to pretty much spend his whole turn drawing. This is again the great thing about Jinteki. He fights off early game aggression by getting rid of key cards, or again forcing the corporation to draw up, um, allowing me to either A, build up my economy, or, or B, perhaps score another agenda. So although he has the Corrode, I'm not overly concerned. I'm going to take three credits for my ten, at which point uh, Torium then clears Katie for some lovely, lovely cash. Looks like he has a Desperado in hand, which, we, which he plays for his second click. So he's starting to build the, the pieces of the puzzle. It looks like he 
possibly has a mimic there as well, and I think he just drew an indexing. He's very fond of his index. Uh, and again, obviously a very strong card against Jinteki. A great way of checking the top of R&D without risking uh, a huge wealth of net damage being scored against you. Uh, he's going to Karate Chop HQ and have a little look. So obviously the run is successful and he gets his Desperado credit but doesn't see anything. So tentatively placed, uh, again he's starting to build those essential pieces of the puzzle, i.e. Desperado, he has his Katie Jones there for economy and has the Corroder on the board as well. Plenty of cash, uh, myself not so much, but this is where another, ca again I was very concerned about him running HQ a great deal I think at this stage, which obviously Gabe wants to do over and over again, so I wanted to get rid of any agendas that I possibly could. Um, and we would again, so I score another clone retirement here, do another net damage, slow him down, while at the same time securing HQ just that little bit more against him, um, which is, I feel is very important. Particularly because they get a bad pub if they steal clone retirement. It's a high risk card, um, but at the same time it can be very strong. So he plays Mimic. Again, it looks like a mirror, but I promise you it's an actual card. And I promise you it's Mimic. Uh, he runs on HQ again, sees nothing, uh, gains the credits. <laughs> He's drawn up a great deal as well, so he's back up to a hand of four, or three, I think, possibly. Uh, I think I'm setting up another remote here, which is a Jackson Howard. I promise you to take my word for it. Uh, so there's a Jackson Howard there being installed. I think I used it to draw up as well. Uh, back up to three credits. I think at this stage I'm looking to use my Marvelous Draft uh, Celebrity Gift and get my economy back up to uh, to scratch. So he runs on Jackson Howard and I make him trash it rather than using it to shuffle anything back in. He's got the money but I wanted to try and, and just keep soaking it up as much as I possibly could. I didn't really have any great targets to put back into R&D at this stage other than the snare and a little bit, a few bits and pieces of economy so I thought I'd wait off and potentially have the option of shuffling back a Jackson Howard into the deck. He runs on an R&D and sees nothing. Been a little bit unfortunate with his accesses Obviously I've been clearing HQ pretty much as soon as an agenda hits it. So Celebrity Gift, as I said, um, showing him five cards. So Snare, another Celebrity Gift, two pieces of ice, and an, unorth an unorthodox predictions. So not particularly a high risk hand to show him. Made all the more secure by the fact that I have a Snare there. And I've gained ten credits, so a, a lovely net gain there of seven credits for two clicks very very worthwhile and again it's the card that's made the biggest difference in Jinteki so installing there and the question is is it the unorthodox predictions or is it the snare he's going to put the data sucker down aka another mirror uh, he's going to run through on HQ again oh sorry R&D rather I should say Gain his data sucker credit and sees nothing so again he is getting a little bit unfortunate here with his R&D accesses there's no denying it but probably starting to feel the pressure a little bit here is it four points to zero and although he's got a nice rig set up, he's, he's definitely lacking a, the pressure that he probably needs. I've only got three pieces of ice. So Chimera comes out. Um, obviously I assigned it as a code gate, which is the only break he doesn't have currently. And then derezzes. But it's done its job. And then the run for two credits is never a bad thing. Advance the score and an orthodox prediction. Um, which which point I believe I declare barriers to be unbreakable. Uh, I think I'm trying to keep him out of... HQ, just try and reduce that economic gain he gets from running into HQ. And I believe I had an agenda in hand as well, so I, I wanted to try and, and protect that as well. The strongest play, I think, with an orthodox prediction, as I said on the site, is, is install advance advance. Um, but at this stage, four points, go moving on to five points, it really cranks the pressure up on, on the, the runner. They then have to pretty much run on anything you, you uh, put down in a remote. It doesn't certainly make a, a, a few difficulties. I think I, may have put, I think I may have made sentries unbreakable actually, rather than barriers, because he's running through on HQ. So, uh, possibly a mistake there. I think again, I was in two minds as I recall, and kept umming and ahhing between barriers and sentries. So he puts another three on Katie, having seen nothing in, from his runner's HQ. So he still doesn't have the code gate breaker. Presumably he's going to have it out soon. Um, I can't 
be sure that anything I put in that remote is going to be safe, certainly. Especially as I've seen no inside jobs. Which he may have in the deck. Another celebrity gift. Showing him all five. Showing him a virtually identical hand from the last time. Three pieces of ice, I think, there. A snare still, and an orthodox, an orthodox prediction again. So nothing game winning. I'm only on five agenda points. This deck is very much, as again, another install. Uh, was it the snare? Was it an orthodox prediction? I'm going to make him go and try and chase it, regardless. He, can he really afford to, to let me get to six points? This is the question. He's going to run HQ first of all, secure his cash for Gabe. He's got virtually a whole breaker suite out now, so I don't see a, a great deal of point in... in oh, he hits the snare, bless <laughs> his cotton socks. So that's two snares now he's run headlong into. It seems only fair after uh, I did exactly the same and lost the game because of it. Uh, so I take it to another three. And again, a great way of slowing down the corporation... Uh, the runner, sorry. Uh, making him spend valuable turns, valuable clicks, just drawing up and shoring up his hand, protecting against the, the potential flatline either in the form of New Orleans Peas or maybe even a Scorched Earth that may be splashed. This deck doesn't have Scorched Earth, but the runner isn't to know that. Uh, he's going to play a Fem, and he's going to Fem the remote, the Chimera, and then obviously run through on the remote, at which point I reveal another snare now. That would be nice, though. Uh, but it is a... Uh, oh again, obviously he hit the snare in R&D, so he, uh, in HQ. He knew that there wasn't another snare there, so he knew it was going to be the agenda. It was the only other asset I had, so it was relatively <laughs> risk-free, having already hit the, the risky stage. So it's now five points to one. He scored the unorthodox. So I trash his KT. Uh, he left the tag on from the snare. And again, I just thought it was a, a, he hasn't got any other economy out. So I thought it was a strong way of just shoring up and slowing him down. He's only on nine credits. It's not a huge amount of money. He does have the data suckers, which are pretty much better than credits. But I wanted to try and slow him down. I wanted to make him install extra economic assets. Spend the clicks not only on uh, drawing up, but also on playing cards that he wouldn't have had to have done otherwise. Okay, so he runs in HQs and sees nothing. Again, I'm not leaving anything in HQ unless I absolutely have to. Um, just purely and simply. So he runs on it, sorry, runs on RD there, draws the feet to lay off the top. Uh, obviously it didn't cost him anything to break particularly, it cost him one to break. And so he's now uh, umming and ahhing and figuring out whether he wants to steal or not. He's only on three cards, so he'd have to drop them all. And it's his last click. Oh, I think he's got one click left, rather, I should say. Oh, he's got one card in hand. I think it's... I don't know where it... I don't, I don't know what's going on there, but I know he's got another hand. I think at this point we're discussing how many clicks he actually did have left, and I think, looking back at the video footage, I, I think I was right. Uh, I don't think he had uh, any other clicks left. Um, I don't believe so, anyway. We were, we were debating and discussing what, what the situation was. But again, I think looking back, I think I was right. I, th I think he had exhausted all his clicks, and we came to the conclusion that that was the case. So I'm glad I videoed it, and I'm glad I uh, I was was correct in that. Uh, so we continued on. Uh, obviously, I did a mandatory draw, having looked at it and put it back anyway. I'm pretty sure it was an archer, if memory serves. So again, I'm feeling fairly confident at this stage. It's three points to five, and. Uh, got what I need, so I install another piece of ice onto R&D. I install what's another, ja I think another Jackson there on a, in a far remote. And I use it, sorry, res it and, and use it to draw up two. Looking for the game winning agenda here, I think. Tori looks like he's drawn up uh, a couple of fairies there. Plays a yog for five. No, no, uh, no, ser no server is sacred. Uh, back to the corp. Who, again, I do the manager draw. So I'm a little bit concerned. That I'm pretty sure that piece of ice then on that Ramon is an enigma, which isn't going to do a great deal of damage against the Yog. So this is where, at this stage, I believe I uh, look to my fast advance elements in my deck, uh, which I, I have a few of, and it uh, advance my ice wall twice pretty much telegraphing that uh, I'm looking to trick of light. 
um, and I draw up with Jackson and I look to discard not only a gender, I think I did an agenda, but I think also a snare there because again with the Jackson on the board my plan is to shuffle those snares back in. R&D is incredibly vulnerable and um, it seems to me to make sense to try and, uh, and shore, up, shore it all up. So here I, again I'm debating whether or not, oh no, okay, I'm making trash it, sorry. Again I saw how much money he was on and thought actually that's probably not a bad play. Lelling him trash. I don't think I did put any agendas down there. I think I'm looking for them with the Jackson. And I'm pretty sure I had another Jackson in hand as well. So, Celebrity Gift. So, we're about to find out exactly what I've got. So, yeah, the Jackson Howard. Three Trick of Lights and a Chum. Not a particularly high risk hand to show in there for the benefit of seven credits. Got to love Celebrity Gift. It really is an incredible card for Jinteki. It has made a humongous difference to the way they play and the way in which they can now um, score out agendas quickly and rush through um, vital early agendas to put the, the really put the pressure on the corp. So there's a card from the past, a bit of a blast from the past, Armitage Code Busting. Uh, and I believe he clicked th uh, three times as well to gain his cash. So he's after his money. Armitage Code Busting. Those are the days, eh? Still a great card, it has to be said. So here I play out the Jackson in a far remote. Uh, rares and draw two. Again, obviously I have the Trick of Light. I'm looking rather desperately here for the Brain Trust. Uh, if I can see the Brain Trust, I can win the game. Install into the remote. Again, making him, making him chase the game. He has to run there. If it's a Brain Trust, game over. I don't think it is a brain trust, but uh, he can't really afford to take that risk. It could be a very elaborate bluff. So he's going to run archives, uh, at which point I do use Jackson. Oh no, I don't, sorry. I don't use Jackson, that's right, I remember now. Um, he's going to go through and then count up how many snares have actually come out of the deck, of which I'm pretty sure it's only two. There's still one snare left. Uh, so he runs archives on the first click. And the reason why I didn't use my Jackson at this stage was because I wanted him to use him to draw through. And I also wanted, if, if again, I could use him at any point I needed to, i.e. when he ran R&D, um, to shuffle the snares back into the deck. So he runs HQ, sees nothing, at which point... He does run the Jackson Howard, and I do use him at this stage um, to shuffle back in cards, and I'm quite happy to show them what they are. So two snares, uh, it didn't really matter what the third one was. I wasn't particularly short on money, and I wasn't particularly short on uh, the, the elements I needed to actually play this deck, but I thought I'd put another hedge fund in. The important thing was the snares going back in the deck and making R&D seem just a little bit more unappetising. So third click, he's going to, sorry, third and, th I think that was the end, sorry, yeah, that was it. Oh no, he, sorry, he ran, ran the remote, uh, saw the Sansan, -san, which is one of my key splashes in the deck. I knew it wasn't likely to stay there, but I wanted, again, to soak up his economy up, make him, make him work, make him work for it. didn't bother raising the ice, didn't need it. I've got the two advancement uh, tokens on ice wall. I've got the trick of lights in hand. All I need to see is the key card. So install, trick of light, advance, score, profiteering. So only one point, but uh, a key one point. Which means I can now fast advance any other card. So I score it for its maximum allowance, 15 credits, giving uh, Taurine 3 bad publicity to play with. And I, so I think at this stage I was like, I'm not going to bother with money. Money is no longer the important thing. It's all about finding those fast advance elements I need to uh, win, it, win the game now. I've already got the Trick of Light. I can put more advancement tokens on Ice Wall. He's going to run R&D. Uh, I rest the chum. which he breaks using uh, data sucker tokens and yog. 
Church again. I knew he was going to. Now, this is where I really am an art. It's the question of, do I give up an agenda point to res the archer that's in front of R&D? Um, I want what I want to do is soak up his data sucker tokens. I want to make him use those bar pub and uh, make him use extra credits to get through. Make him work for R and D accesses, and again hope that I see the brain trust, so that the giving up one agenda point doesn't make a great deal of difference. Essentially, this was a, again a very I think, critical point for me. I, I really wasn't sure whether resing the archer was the strongest play, or just perhaps waiting to see if I could find one a one point agenda. I decided to go for it in the end, and, de and uh, give up an agenda point, leave me back on five. Which again makes him soak up a huge amount of data circuit tokens now. And one for the chum and three for the archer, so that he can be broken with mimic. Um, so he does go through and break it, which is fine. He accesses, sees nothing. Oh, sorry, sees a snare. <laughs> so that's the third snare he's hit. The joy of shuffling cards back in. Uh, at this stage, I'm like, hang on, <laughs> I've not taken the card you're offering me, I'm going to take from the other side. <laughs> it was a nice try, though, Tori, nice try. Uh, so he loses another three cards and takes a tag. And again, a great time to hit a snare there. And again, another reason why... Jax and Howards are incredibly strong in any faction, but particularly, I think particularly in Jinteki, the, the option of shuffling back in protection for R&D uh, is, is very good, very nice. And snares really are crucial to the defence of, of R&D and defence of deep digging. And it's particularly unappetising now that there are there's a chum into an archer as well, so he has to be very cautious. He's going to click for money uh, off Armitage code busting. So I'm rolling in cash, so I get ready for a trick of light, and uh, then play a restructure as well, taking another five credits. Again, another key card for the operation-based economy that Jinteki almost certainly now is playing with, uh, i.e. sort of three hedge funds, three celebrity gifts, two restructures, plus perhaps uh, a few profiteering, two or three profiteerings. Uh, lots of economy now for Jinteki. I've been in a stronger economic position than than than, than, uh, than Torian for virtually the whole game, which has been incredibly important. So he was giving some thought there to running on R and D. Decided yeah. against it again. He would have to have used virtually all of his data sucker tokens, and at which point he would then have to spend clicks running archives or or I HQ to be able to enable himself to then run through on R and D, which was the plan and the idea of resing the archer in the first place, it's to, to make R&D digging far more of a click investment. He has to spend more time, more runs, doing what he doesn't want to do. And he still doesn't see anything. He has been incredibly unfortunate with his R&D accesses here. Probably could have benefited from an R&D interface, but unfortunately is quite risky against Jinteki. There's no denying it. So I'm all set up here for the fast advance. I've got two advancement tokens on Ice Wall once again. And so I'm drawing. I am just drawing, 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 hoping to find the, the, the brain trust that I need to win the match. And I play a hedge fund last click, just again purely to get rid of a card. I'm pretty sure I did actually see the brain trust here. Um, I can't quite remember if it was this turn. So I'm discarding what I don't need. Probably some ice. Uh, first click is going to draw, second click is going to run HQ. Again, he's got to assume I've probably stolen the, or taken the agenda he needs, which he does see, so he scores, I think it was the profiteering I had in hand there. Um, so he takes another agenda point, and another net damage as a result. The question here is, how many agendas am I likely to be hiding? Am I hiding more than one? Am I hiding two? So he runs HQ again. Doesn't see what he needs. Yeah, so really difficult situation here. You know, I spent the whole turn drawing up. The last click is going to run archives. Keep me honest, and obviously take a data token as well as a credit. But it's all rather moot. 
because that's the brain trust, that's the trick of light, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is the game. Um, again, a relatively quick paced match, I have to say, for Jinteki. I, I do think their, their rush tactics have become stronger and stronger as time has gone on, and very difficult to deal with, uh, hence the reason why I've fallen back in love with trick, and l trick of light and San San within the deck. So it was uh, one all, as was as were all the rounds of this round of Swiss, so it's pretty much even Stevens and non